Today's guest is uh, hilarious. Uh, she makes me laugh. She makes me feel good. You know, she's an uplifting gal. And um, and I'm just really just, I mean, I'm just tickled. I am just tickled to have her. It is comedian Chelsea Lynn. Can you, imagine, can you imagine a skullet between your legs? Yeah. I cannot, and very few women get to know what that's like. And I do. Um, well, dude, my air conditioner. It's hot. I'm sweating. Are you? Yeah. You well, nice. I'm large. In, thank you. Yeah. So I have an extra layer anyway, mm-hmm. so I get hot, but yeah, it's hot in here. Is your... I know I've seen some of your family members that are more kind of a Rubenesque vibe. Do you feel... Do you... Is your family just kind of a bigger family? No, no, not at all. Um, I've got two sisters and an aunt and cousins, and that's really about it. Everybody else is dead. Really? Yeah. Oh or just God. don't have relationships with them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One or the other. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> um. No, my air conditioner went out yesterday. <sighs> so there's no air in here. Oh, there's air. I, I just turned it uh, off. Made it colder. Oh, you did just, just now. As okay. you were saying. It'll be but, good. We'll just sweat the whole time. Yeah, It'll be we're fine. no. There's no. But Theo's, there's no rules to this. Theo lost it in his apartment. <gasps> yeah. Oh, and it's been hotter than. Yeah. This is like Texas heat. Yeah, it's. We're hot. not used to this out here. Well, it's bad, and I just didn't know what to do. So I got a, one of those floor fans, and I put all took all the ice out of the freezer and put it right on the floor right in front of it. Did it work? Like on a cookie sheet. Did it work? Uh, That's supposed to work. I think it did something, but I, you're used to luxury. I'm, I, you know, I'm not used to luxury, but I'm used to freaking having <laughs> air conditioning. Yeah, man. which is luxury. And look, it. Re- you, you know what? You really. I'll tell you this. The second went an hour after it went out. I was googling like Native American <laughs> shit. <I'm, laughs> You know what I'm saying? I'm starting to see. Yeah. I'm texting my mom. I'm like, yeah. aren't we part Cherokee or whatever? I can't even <laughs> handle. You know, just the lack of just. Yeah, man. Just the comfort. For real. And damn, I just feel bad. Uh, Greg, my husband, bitches about the uh, electric bill because I run the air 24-7. Yeah. I keep it on like 68. He freaks the fuck out. Yeah. Okay. My stepmom does that. She's on pills, though. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. If you're on pills, dude, you got to have... (laughs) Yeah. I can't even... Dude, nothing goes with a Percocet like a good little bit of air conditioning, uh-huh. you know? Yeah, that makes sense for sure. But uh, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go on. Oh, I don't even know what I was talking about. But he, so he, you have the air conditioner going. Oh, so I, that's what I, that's what I spend my money on. Yeah. Is air conditioning. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm dead serious. <laughs> Comfort. Yeah. Last summer, one of our bills was like $1,200 for the, yeah. And oh, I was like, I, he threw a, I was like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm comfortable. Yeah. That's all that matters. We're doing it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If this is living large, this mm-hmm. is living large. Exactly. Son. I like that. Yeah. And you guys live in... Um, San Diego. San Diego, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. I saw you down there at the comedy store. Yeah. That's the first time, yeah, I ever knew about you. So here's what happened. Here's oh, how okay. I discovered you. Okay. So I was like, man, I want to go see some comedy. I was mm-hmm. like, let's let's uh, take a look. You know, looked up the comedy stores, mm-hmm. going going through the schedule. Didn't really see anybody that I knew. Saw a picture of you. I go, oh, he's cute as shit. Oh, damn. Let me YouTube see see if you know. Well, I'm gonna go see him. Mm-hmm. First video, I was like, I'm buying fucking tickets. Oh, damn. Started following you on um, Instagram. You had like <laughs> seventeen thousand followers, maybe. Oh, dang. Yeah. yeah. Started following you. Um, God, I was went, almost a damn shelter animal. <laughs> went and saw you. You were so fucking funny. Oh. And afterwards were so fucking nice to me and my sisters. I was like, forever fan. Oh. For, forever fucking fan, man. That's sweet of and you. And then, yeah, and then you blew up and now I'm on your podcast. I'm freaking out. I know. It's Thanks so Thanks for awesome. having me. <laughs> no, I'm so happy to have you. And I'm glad. Uh, I mean, I think we really lucked out even by having you on this week because I feel like you're kind of having like a moment. 
a little bit. That's, is that crazy to say that? I know that sounds really no. That's really for weird. a lot of people. It's kind of coming out of the closet or whatever. But this is like a like a yeah. like I saw you on Michael Bisping's damn Instagram, and I'm just yeah. like, what? How are all these worlds colliding? Dude, He's damn British. I went viral a couple days ago. You know, he's a one-eyed British man. Dude, I don't know. It's just I'm just rolling. I'm just rolling with it. Yeah. Day to day, I have no idea what's happening. I'm just like, all right, let's do this. Uh, but the, and you just hit a million on Instagram. Yeah. That's you know crazy. what? Instagram hits different. Mm -hmm. So I have a million on, on every you, on YouTube. I know. Go yeah. on. Sorry. Everywhere else, I have a million. I just started TikTok and got a million on TikTok in like two months and I've posted like four videos and I'm, I'm just kind of like okay million whatever I don't really care something about Instagram man I'm like I hit a million on Instagram yeah. I think cause it's harder to grow on Instagram people are stingy with that follow button yeah people are a little stingy yeah I think especially the, right like now I feel like people have been um, you know I feel like there's it's Instagram's been a while around for a while now. Yeah. So it's not, you know, people aren't just as like, oh yeah, I'm get, you know, mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm following anybody, you know, I'll follow any, you know, exactly. there's a time I'll follow anybody with a damn tit. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'll follow anybody that's not in a damn wheelchair. You know what I'm saying? My requirements <laughs> were very slim at a certain point. Right. Yeah. But yeah. now it's a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know. Yep. Exactly. Um, but that had to feel good. When did that happen? When did like you hit two a days ago? Two days ago. And what were y'all doing? Where were you? I mean, this is your damn freaking electronic JFK right here. Oh, gosh. Just sitting on my couch in a moo moo, just watching Dateline. Oh. And I was like, oh, I had a friend text me. And he was like, oh, congratulations on the moon. I'm like, oh. I knew it happened that day. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, I get on there. I'm like, hey, look at that. And that was pretty much it. Warren. Everybody's like, hey, you going to celebrate? I'm like, celebrate? Like, you know how people get balloons and shit? Yeah. I made fun of it a while back, and my sister was going to get me balloons just to fuck with me. And uh -huh. I was like, you, I'll pop them. Do not fucking get me. <laughs> Congratulations, balloons. Holy shit. That's embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, Do not. I'll it, pop them. Dude, there almost is. Look, I think if you're getting congratulation balloons, you aren't doing enough with your life. I'm going to go out on a damn limb and say that. <laughs> oh, my because God. Because anytime somebody needs to get you damn balloons... <laughs> To show that you have some kind of damn Holy achievement. Holy shit. That's funny. Sometimes it's just, God, I don't know. You see some fucktard walk over with a pack of balloons and a damn, <laughs> you know. And then my aunt one time, like, they have the little thing that's filled with a, uh, it has a balloon, another balloon that's oh, empty. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's filled with something. Confetti or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah candy. Yeah. yeah. And she would open that. And it's saying, no, but it was just saying, you know what I'm saying? It was just like saying. And she if you're buying a balloon in a balloon, yeah. you got money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got money. That's oh, not yeah. a regular balloon, you know? <laughs> yeah, you definitely got money yeah. there. But yeah, that had to be so wild. But that's when I, I was just like, holy smokes, like this is so crazy and it's so awesome that everybody starts to know about you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's super weird. Because you're so funny. Uh, and do you feel like like your funny comes from where? Like because you weren't a stand up to start with. No, no. Um, <laughs> so how do yeah? Let's do your origin story. Damn it. Yeah. You know? Where do you want to start? Clark Kent start in the damn mail room. <laughs> yeah. you know? So you know, I don't know where the funny comes from. I think I had such a, um, I guess, a shitty childhood. That I kind of had to, you know, I was the poor kid in school. I was the large kid in school, you know, so I had to have something. Yeah. So I think that just like came out of me, J probably early junior high. Were you funny then? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I wish we had those videos. Yeah. 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 I know. Imagine? I was thinking about that. I was like, man, I wish we had, I wish I could vlog back then. Oh my God. To see that shit. But um, so funny. Where were you funny at? Like, was there like an environment that you were kind of really shined in? You know, was it a particular place or with you know, a certain group? Or? I know, I've always remember this, and this may be cheesy as hell, but I remember the first time I made a a room laugh, mm -hmm. and I was in seventh grade um, basketball practice. Mm. And we, after Damn, practice. sex symbol basketball? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, went back to the uh, locker room. Everybody's getting ready for class or whatever. And I don't even know what was said. I have no clue. But I had been to this school about a month. So I didn't really know, you know. And um, I don't know what I said, but the whole fucking locker room was piss in their pants yeah. and somebody goes she's funny and that always just stuck with me i'm like oh you know kind of so that was like the first time i remember like you know 
Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there's something mad when you're saying that it makes me it takes me back to those times. Yeah, but like there's something magical when you don't feel like you have a, a something that people that people see, mm-hmm. you know? And then when they say that you're funny, you're like, "Oh." Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's almost like, "Thank God, there's some I have some way Yeah. for people to see me." You know? Do you ever say something? Do you ever say something and then somebody dies laughing and you didn't think it was funny, but they thought it was the funniest thing they ever heard in their life? That happens to me all the time. I'm like, I was, I am not that funny, and they're yeah. like dying. Uh, well, I think you start to become. Well, some people start to become kind of. There's times where I know I'm doing something funny and people don't know it yet. Mm. That's always kind of fun when like, and That's it's not. Deep. That, it's not that I'm doing it on purpose. It's just I know my brain <laughs> starts to see a pattern of like, oh this is where they're at and this is where my brain is over here right now and so in a second this is all you know this corner is going to turn or something yeah um sometimes though people like stuff like i'm one i watch when i watch your videos i notice a lot there's a little things that i like like when your cousin jim when that little fella just turns his head at a certain angle (laughs) and i just see the cut of that boy's just damn (laughs) Where his neck just runs Holy right into his damn shit. forehead, you know. I, I, and I, found, just, I found that guy on Instagram. God, I flew I, him out to do a video. I said, "You got to come do a video with I me." I love that. Just the look. And then I love him, and so <laughs> I think there's one thing that that really for me about you is that you're the people you find funny. I find so funny <laughs> that it's like, oh wow, I can trust her on different levels, not oh. only to entertain me, but also. Like, uh, she sees, like, something that that uh, a lot of people maybe wouldn't see. Yeah. You know? I mean, some people see this fellow little Jim, and they might even, you know, somebody probably damn molest him. You know, yeah. you get a couple of damn, you know, <laughs> We've positive had a few of those football comments. players. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And they'll play damn fullback in a fucking haunted house with this dude, you know? <laughs> but, um... <laughs> But yeah, I think that's one that that's one of the things I notice as I see more of your stuff that makes me laugh more. I think is like trusting that you're gonna lead me also to something funny, you know. Oh, thank you. And just the cuteness of it, like the damn ant and just the <laughs> There's a whole storyline to it. <laughs> and it's all made up on the spot, man. And I just roll with it and I try to remember the storyline for future shit. It's just it's just all uh- fucking crazy it's so funny yeah it's just such a good you do you do such a great job i think of just bringing joy especially during like the coronavirus time i feel like i've had such a tough time during all this of Mm -hmm. trying to like figure out what's funny or be like just be in the funny you know um do you feel like it's been tougher during this time or you feel like opposite opposite for me i feel like my my well my shit's been thriving since you know um my creative has been thriving my just everything for some reason just total opposite for me yeah i was supposed to go on tour oh you and, were gonna and you i don't know if you remember but like two or three years ago we did um the josh wolf josh wolf show and do you remember me telling you i was like man i don't know i don't know if i want to do stand up i'm kind of scared and you were like why and i was like i don't know and you're like just do it and i literally was like i left and i was like yeah He's right. And so I've literally started stand up because of that. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Yeah, I can't believe that. You were yeah. like, huh? No, just do it. And I was like, he's fucking right. Well, I think some people, it's like you want to, you just want to listen to the person. You, you want to be a part of their world. You know, they're bringing the joy. You know, sometimes if people are selling jokes, sometimes people are selling joy, not really selling it, but. You know, I just feel like people want to be in your world, yeah. you know, and once you create like a world, people want to be in it. Yeah. So that's great then. So you were planning on tour. That's the thing I was going to ask you. So, so with starting out, you started out where at? Like just being funny. Where'd you grow up at? Uh, Thackerville, Oklahoma. Okay. It's about a mm, 45 minutes north of Dallas. It's right on the Oklahoma, Texas border. Okay. I graduated high school with 12 people. Oh, damn. Yeah. 12 people. We did not have a football team. We did not have band. We did not have art. Like, nothing. Did y'all have, like, a like a youth group or something? A religious oh, youth yeah. group? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. We had this thing called The Upper Room, and my best friend's family ran it. Damn. Yeah. And that was that was all there was to do. Play, play softball and go to the upper room. And they just had, like, 
pool tables and and Christian rock and oh, you know yeah. you know what I'm talking about yeah, oh, yeah yeah dude and that was it that was that was all I did for that real. was fun that was yeah. a social life oh yeah and is Thackerville a big place or no oh no we've got um oh when I was there we didn't even have a stoplight now there's a stoplight because we have the world's largest casino Ooh. yeah so it's random we have nothing but dirt roads uh one convenience store that's it and then the world's largest casino mm. yeah well that's enough Isn't convenience that really i mean it's a, that's the thing you know that's all you need you would yeah you would think that's all you need people want more <laughs> yeah you know? yeah people and some people need more man yeah um that's true so thackerville so you graduated from there and then you went because I, I was kind of it was kind of surprised me when i saw you in san diego because i'm like this doesn't seem to fit everything, but I, everything works. Yeah. But it, uh, it was surprising to me. So, no. Well, to me, too. <clears throat> so, I graduated college, married Greg. Mm -hmm. Okay. We moved to Dallas. So, we were there for like three years. Um, He's looking for, he was looking for a new job. Oh, God. I was working at Whole Sound Foods like at the time. Deadbeat, dude. <laughs> I was working at Whole Foods at the time in the bakery. Come home from work and he's like, oh, I've got a job interview. I'm like, that's great. Where at? And he was like, it's this job in San Diego. And I was literally like, I thought he was fucking with me. I'm like, why did you apply for a job in San Diego? Yeah. And he's like, I didn't. A recruiter reached out. And I'm like, we're not moving to San Diego. That's called the military, Greg. Yeah, for, <laughs> for real. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna it's a it's a unique group, you know, that <laughs> they've been in business for a couple hundred years. They've reached out to me. Yeah. Um, and There's this, battleship opportunities. <laughs> <laughs> so we moved to San Diego. It's supposed to be temporary. Wow. And once I got out, once we got out here, I was like, I don't want to live anywhere else. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And then that's when shit started to pop for me. Because that's, I, that's a big move. I mean, yeah. moving, moving from a place where you have a, the comfort and you guys, especially going from like in the Dallas, that's a big move to go out west. Oh, it was huge. And, and then you get the shock of everything being more expensive out here, mm -hmm. which is so true. I think I think our one bedroom apartment was like seven hundred a month. We come out here and it's like twenty two hundred dollars for you know. What I mean, we were like, eh. yeah. Um, yeah, it was a big shock. We're used to it now. Um, when we when we moved to San Diego, I had just started the social media stuff, so okay. I didn't, didn't really have a lot of followers. And then it just slowly. We've been we've been in San Diego seven years, almost eight maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's flown by. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so with the social media, so you do the characters kind of, but a lot of it, uh, always, you always run into all of it. It always seems like a mix of you and the characters and just like a kind of a world kind of. Do you ever get like scared to try something new? Are there things that you get afraid to try? Oh, yeah. And not for me, but because people get pissed. You know what I mean? So I've years ago I tried to do a couple other characters besides Trailer Trash Tammy mm -hmm. and people. Let's go to this. We'll go to this video right here. Just I don't mean to interrupt you. No, you're good. But this, you know, we're trying to have Nick keep his job, and so this is where he hey, interjects Chelsea, good videos. I'm a big fan of you and all your videos. I watch them every day. Also, your mukbangs. My question is for you: Are you scared to say something really outrageous or so outrageous that? People might take offense to it, and you might get what we call cancel culture. Let me know. Bye. Oh, my God. She's cute. <laughs> she is cute, huh? Very um, cute. I'm not, like, in terms of comedy, not afraid to say anything. Like, I'll joke about whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so, th in that way, I'm not, I guess I'm not scared to, to but the cancel culture thing, holy shit yeah you gotta i mean you, you gotta watch like it's ridiculous i feel like you yeah that that's on that's definitely always on the back of my mind is, is it, it yours i mean all my I, I didn't know all my friends were damn sex offenders you know until <laughs> you know holy shit until hollywood told me that they yeah. were you know yeah. surprised me with that <laughs> uh I think it here's when it gets scary for me. So like I have a Netflix special that we're going to do sometime in when the world opens back mm -hmm. up. So we have like a deal over there and trying to work on a cartoon right now. And um, so I get scared of I know that those are the things that are at risk for me. Yeah. So it's like I can, you know, I can say whatever I want to say, but I have to since those things are on the other side of the teeter totter. Yeah. If it were just my podcast and just uh, social medias, then I wouldn't, I think I wouldn't, there wouldn't be anything on that other side of the teeter totter yeah. to lose. Yeah. But right now, those are things where an article or something and then people get scared. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And yeah. in the podcasting world, it's like, you know, some of the guys that something happens and then people are like, well, why don't they still do their podcast? And well, because the advertisers say we don't want to be on this podcast right now. And so then, you know, they just get they get really nervous, I guess, as well, you know, but um, right. Anyway, so, yeah, where does it where where does it hit with you? Oh, gosh, for me. So. Anything political, I don't mess with. Yeah. For multiple reasons. Not really because I'm scared of the cancel culture thing. But for me, it's like, you know, I yeah, I have a large platform. And I've and very rarely will people message me and say, you need to use your platform for this or that. 99.9% .9 of people message me and say, thank you for not. Thank you for being a place where I can go and get away from that and laugh. So that's the number one reason. I love it. Why I... I really, you know, try to stick with just comedy, nothing too, you know, crazy political. And, and it's not that I'm afraid of like the backlash or whatever. It's just, you know, literally Dolly Parton is my, you oh know, my God, ah, yeah. and I'm just following her footsteps. She really keeps it like, you know, I'm just here to bring entertainment, mm -hmm. bring laughs, bring smiles. I'm not here to, you can go to another page for that shit. Yeah. You know, here we're talking about titties. Yeah. Saggy titties. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I'm here Decent for. Decent bags, baby. Exactly. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Something to hold a set of balloons down, you know? There you go. You need a big titty, something to hold down a set of damn get well balloons. Yes. <laughs> you, <know? laughs> you get yeah. these small titties, dude. You'll never get no. well. No. Exactly. Dude, I remember my mother had the smallest breast, God forbid, and I love mm -hmm. her and she listens to this podcast, which almost breaks my heart a lot of times, but, um, and makes my heart at the same time. Oh, uh, but damn, she had them small. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had to beat a little milk out of them. Damn. And so that's why I think I still got that nervous energy. You know, you yeah. see a baby trying to just <laughs> breastfeed off a small titty. There's nothing. Yeah. Got to break your heart. <laughs> yeah. You see a baby trying to You got to work a, hard for that milk. Oh, you can't even shake a small tit. <laughs> yeah. Without hurting somebody's back. <laughs> without hurting yeah. somebody's back. It's just a different place, man. It's yeah, just a for damn sure. different place. So. For sure. Uh, but yeah, you want one thing. So then, then I start to feel like this, I start to feel like, well, as comedians, you're also supposed to, and this may be where it, maybe the line gets a little different for, um, me coming from a background more of stand up comedy mm -hmm. is that you're supposed to be able to comment on things. You're supposed to be able to at least be able to take a swing at things mm -hmm. without, um, you know, without being judged just for taking a swing. Yeah. And so that's where it gets tricky for me sometimes with stand-up because it's like you want to be able to kind of speak out or push the boundaries or – and then it really starts to feel real, real limiting mm. when your voice starts to get limited, you know. But but then maybe I, I'm like I just need to start to be more creative. I start to – you know, I'm finally starting to land in that place instead of the place of, oh, this, you know – Ah, uh, you know the, yeah. the frustration. For see, for stand up comedy, I feel like it's. I feel like that's fine for sure to push that shit. I'm worried about like oh an old tweet or if I say something in a vlog, I really have the, and not that I go around saying shit that would get me canceled anyway. I don't. Right. I really don't. But you you have to like yeah you have to like watch that shit if you're if you're doing stuff. Not only on the stage. Does that make sense? Like, oh, totally. You know, like you, if you put yourself out there everywhere, stage, YouTube, vlogging, Snapchat, like, I mean, it just grows bigger. The possibility. Yeah, yeah, the possibility of more people getting offended as well. Yeah, well, it's just. I mean, what if ten years from now it's they have semen lives matter? You know, and anybody <laughs> that ever swallowed after a blowjob is going to jail. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. starts to make me think because mm -hmm. I we just don't know what the line is going to be in the future i know um, did you see my instagram story yesterday i don't know if you did i uh, i had a lady come to the house to give me a massage that mm -hmm. i found on the internet oh god she yeah. was a crackhead okay and so i made a whole instagram story making fun of her mm -hmm. and telling them what happened she passed out during my massage but it's a whole thing mm -hmm. and when you know people don't make fun of is her is it up right now yeah let's watch it and i literally said i'm gonna make fun of whatever the fuck i want to make fun of like it's that. long but yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> I decided to splurge and find someone to come to the house and give a massage. Look, I've been on this site and so is Nick. <laughs> to be honest with back you. Backpage. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> RIP backpage as well. And now you have to do adult friend search. But thankfully, I have blockers on my phone now. So I'm doing well. 
Well, that's not what I got. Let's see what you got. I got a fucking crackhead. Amen. Photo was old. She on crack now. Yes. The bait yeah. and switch. I've yeah. done that. She got me. Catfish me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. yeah, she got me. You couldn't even hardly understand her when she talked. Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, man. But then she, so she comes in and I'm immediately weirded out. I almost tell her I'll pay her for her time, but she's got to bounce. I've done that before as yeah. well, dude. <laughs> and that is, bro, I've been so scared. I went and <laughs> dropped the $300 off the balcony down to the woman. Holy like it was shit. Some kind of freaking, just some kind of bootleg Mardi Gras. Oh. You know? oh. uh, so i'm like fuck it let's just see what happens there we go that's what yeah, i like that yeah. entrepreneurial spirit mm -hmm. um then she tells me that she left her phone and purse in his car and she forgot to tell him when to be back she Ooh. she she her car broke down so somebody dropped her off so another she, crackhead oh yeah she's got that muscular pimp if she's out there giving yeah. massages yeah asks if she can log into her facebook somewhere and message him so <laughs> Dude, you didn't take was, any pictures of her though no well see now then i think that that's totally fine oh no I didn't post pic. No, 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 no. You weren't blasting no. her. No, 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 no. But the story is hilarious. She she fell asleep on me during my massage and was still massaging me. Oh, God. She yeah. passed out on me and was still massaging me. And that's crack, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's crack. I said, I said, are you good? And she and she still laying on me. Goes, yeah, why? I said, because you're, you're laying on me. Yeah. And she goes, oh, yeah, these are new clothes. Something a crackhead would say. Well, that's called, they used to call it crack destruction, dude. So dude. they used to have people that would do crack and they would come and uh, build like in our area. They had a group of young men that would do crack and you'd see them out there zombied out, but still building. Yeah. Dude, I saw a guy speaking of building. I saw a guy on crack one time at a uh, Build-A-Bear and he zoned out, bro. Zero eyes open, you know, zero out of two eyes open. And, and he's he still, building his bear? And he still made that bear. Wow damn that's funny and he still made that bear dude got the bow right in the middle um <laughs> he did it all even the little where you wow. put the one two three on the feet yeah god he did and it on passed each. out the whole time unconscious <laughs> completely <laughs> unconscious dude like if you put that dude right now in a court of law with the hand, one hand on the bible or or even just a berenstain bears book you know whatever meant more to him and you asked him, hey, bugaboo, you know, did you ever build a bear unconscious? I bet he would lie about it. <laughs> and he would lie unknowingly. Oh, man. You know? Oh, that's good shit. Good times. Um, so what else? We got some questions that came in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm not giving up on my ability to conversate with you yet. Oh, but, you're good. Okay, good. Hey, I'm having fun. Are you? Yeah. Good. I'm so glad you're here. This is so oh, cool. Oh, thank you. Uh. Yeah. I'm surprised people sent questions in. That's that's great. Yeah, we got a lot, didn't we? Wow. Yeah, like 15. Some, some are like kind of the cool. sa same old hat, but yeah, we got a lot for you. Okay. What's up, Tammy? What's up, Theo? Quick question. What was your first experience with tobacco? Was it that cowboy killer? Or was it that smokeless lip filler? Gang, gang, nicotine buzz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a fellow with a nice body there too bro no yeah, homo great dog great tank top beautiful young fella right there two arms yeah where I'm from that's a damn highlight two reel, arms bro. one eyebrow oh you show up with two arms dog you know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying he's cute oh yeah. somebody's getting married yeah. to this motherfucker bro <laughs> you know uh, I've Amen. never smoked have you smoked mm -hmm. uh, no 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 I mean I've tried it but I've never like been a smoker oh yeah I'm six months off of cigarettes right oh, now oh okay okay um, so. My grandma and parent, everyone around me growing up, tr chain smokers. No. So I, you know, as a little kid would like try, nah. What did they smoke you? What, do you remember what kind? Well, grandma had to get that jacket. Mm -hmm. So oh. Marlboro. It's Miles, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were always decked out in Marlboro, everything, head to toe. That's how much she smoked. God, and you had that. to smoke like twenty thousand dollars worth of cigarettes to get a jacket. Yeah, and we had closets full. Wow, you know, yeah, <laughs> those jackets. Yeah, those are some prize pieces back oh, in the yeah. day. If oh, you yeah. saw that, it was the adults did the Marlboros and the children did those Kool Aid points that were on the back of the little Kool Aid packets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we'd save up and get a pitcher every year. We'd have a family meeting, <laughs> and we'd do what we wanted to do with the points. You know, man. <laughs> And you could get a little picture. You could get a little, uh, one year we spent all of them, got my little sister a damn vest, dude. And that thing was a piece of shit. Ooh. Oh, it wasn't, it wasn't nice? I mean, it was. You'd think a vest would be nice. You would think. And no. Damn. It was just, I don't know. It was almost like a discontinued, uh, um, 
life jacket, you know, oh. that they were marketing as clothing. No. No. They can't do that. They can't. God, they got gotcha. you. They got yeah. They got gotcha. you. They got us, but Damn. but yeah, those Marlboros. And so your family would just smoke them. Oh yeah. And what would you do? Just watch them? Yeah. Oh wow. That was like we had no cable. So what else were we going to do? <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Let's watch grandma's cheeks turn t- turn you green. You know, we yeah. had channels ten and twelve. We got tired of soap operas, so we just sat there and watched them smoke. What soap operas were y'all watching? Oh you gosh. Um, we used to watch like the Days of Our Life, mm-hmm. just all that shit. Oh yeah. That, literally, light. that's all there was. Guiding Light, as well as hers. Yep, yep. We watched them all. Santa oh. Barbara, that was an old one. My sister still watches them. I oh, haven't right. watched them since high school, but she still watches them. That's I'm really like, interesting. Dedicated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That can really lead to loneliness as well. Yeah. Um. Here's a young lady right here that has a question. Lauren, Virginia, love you both. If you didn't like my last question... Here's another question. Theo, one time you said that you have like a nose power when you go into a public bathroom, you can tell if someone just took a dump or not. Um, I think a lot of people have that power. But what's worse than that is if you go into the female bathroom after a girl who's currently um, going through the time of the month, Ugh, that smell is worse than poop. Chelsea, since you're a girl and you can attest to that, mm. tell Theo what's up. Plus, you know, because apparently your sister's got a little funky. <laughs> Love you both. Thank you so much for being so funny and awesome. Bye. Aw. Dang. So, yeah. Um, is that a real thing? Because I've always had this superpower, and it's not, I mean, I guess some people say it's not a superpower, but if I go into a bathroom, if someone has been doing poop in there, I can tell immediately when I walk oh, in. Oh, I can usually smell it in the hallway. Oh, my God. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. God, dude, you might be a damn. <laughs> you might be from Egypt or something. <laughs> yeah. So the whole female thing, it, it, it smells like you walked into a room that has a pile of a million pennies. Oh, my God. Like a bank? Like a little bad bank? Like a little, like the back of the bank that holds all the coins. Oh. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a copper smell. Mixed in with some funk. Oh. Yeah. So so y'all just have shit. We have shit and blood. Oh. So. It's very, v- yeah, very kind of like Vietnam. like. Yeah. Kind of. If you think about it. Damn. I never thought about that. And so you know, you when you walk in there, you know if that's been going on. Yeah. Well, here's oh, here's the deal. Like God. they'll. Well, that's, that's why. Okay. That's if she mm. wore a pad. And it's soaked up in fucking a gallon whoa, of blood. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> and then leaves it in the trash. Okay, relax, man. <laughs> at least drop it off at the fire department on God. the steps. What is going on around here? <laughs> hey, this is real life. You did not know about this? I didn't know about this, man. Yeah, women are disgusting. I knew that, but I didn't <laughs> know that people are just abandoning. Yeah potential families yeah okay we on that little family pinata i didn't know people are just abandoning those things oh god that's just gross. curbside in the damn bathroom Nasty. at least throw it out the yeah. window on the interstate yeah like a damn fucking adult <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i'm sorry y'all are going through that yeah. i didn't know that mm-hmm. yeah that's why I'm quick to use the men's bathroom. I'll, I'll just use the men's bathroom. Like, I'll have no problem. And the men's bathroom is usually empty. Mm-hmm. And the women's is always full. If there's a line, I'll go to the men's. I don't give a fuck. Well, it's really, you know, it's really a strong move when you say that. Because nowadays, if I see a woman in there, I leave. I don't want to be sex crime. Oh. I don't want to be me too I don't want to be. Well, I'm just afraid of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's no, like, no, no. it's yours now. You know? <laughs> yeah. But Hell, usually, I'll go out there and write a WO on the fucking door for no, you. No, if it's like a big men's bathroom with like yeah. urinals and stalls and there's other men, like, I won't. Like, but if it's like a single, you know what I'm talking about? Like a gas station bathroom oh, with yeah. one and there's one, you know, and the women's is full, I'll go to the men's. But I won't walk in there and walk up beside a urinal and, you know, take a. No, 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 no. But you know what I'm talking about? If it's mm-hmm. like a single, I'll use the men's. I don't give a shit. Wow. Yeah. Mm, I like that. Yeah. And do you all, have you guys ever been to the bathrooms at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium or not? I've never been. How what? are they? I've never been. Your husband's here and he didn't take you there? No, he hates the Cowboys. Oh, damn. But at least take her to the damn place. That's true. That's true. You know what I'm saying, dude? 
<laughs> I fucking hate a uh, claim jumper, but I've been to that bitch three <laughs> times. <okay? laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, no. Are they nice? They are the biggest bathrooms I've ever seen. There's four rooms before you get to anything that has water in it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, well, that's good. I mean, there's no, I'm sure the lines are non existent. Yeah. Oh, there's that. I mean, it's crazy. It's just, anyway, just when you started talking about size of restrooms, it really it took me to another level. Yeah. I Brought thought you about back. that. Yeah. We got to go, babe. Y'all do? No, no, no. I meant to the stadium. Oh, okay. <laughs> I ain't leaving. You got to kick my ass out. <laughs> well, we will in about 45 minutes. Is that it? <laughs> Look, that's just one room. Yeah. <gasps> Can you wow. see any other rooms, Nick? That is pretty nice. That's nice. That is cool. It's not a lot. Mm. Okay. Maybe they won't let you tape it or they anything. They want to keep yeah, it a secret. Yeah. yeah. It, but it is just, it's That's really, cool. it's really high end. It's like um, the magic castle of toiletry. What, uh, what is, so what's kind of like, do you, do you see yourself now? Like, obviously, you know, you got a lot of people interested do you feel any new pressure do you feel do you feel anything like that or do you feel pressure do you feel inspiration like what do you kind of feel if anything um probably um fear more than anything i don't feel pressure mm -hmm. um uh it's just a little scary to me yeah. and not in a bad way i'm not like you know it's just oh, i don't know how to explain it like it's just um it's weird you know what i mean like it's weird i never expected any of this <clears throat> um you know fame scares me money scares me i'm i'm pretty <clears throat> happy and content mm -hmm. so those things change people or yeah. can change people so i'm scared of that it's just all kind of like i'm trying to just does that make sense do you yeah. feel, how do you feel about that yeah yeah i mean it's scary to me it's scary mm -hmm. yeah money's scary po fo popularity is scary mm -hmm. um money's kind of scary because i feel like i never had any money and i don't and i just don't know i think i always judged people with money as well mm -hmm. and so then when you start to make some money you're like damn those people were just you know, I don't want to be the same way that I felt like those people were towards me, maybe. Yeah. But also just realizing like those people were just people mm -hmm. probably trying to do their best. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely kind of scary. Will people look at you differently? Yeah. You know, it's like especially coming from I feel like some of the environments maybe you and I are from where, you know, it always the people with money were always kind of the bad guy I felt like. Yeah. And maybe that's just my perception. No, I can definitely see that. But for sure. rich people, dude, you went over to somebody's house and they had, you know, curtains, you know, and you're like, these motherfuckers. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I was, I was about to say, it's not even like where we're from. It's not even like rich people. It's like people that lived in like a three bedroom, two bath brick house with a trampoline in the backyard was rich to me. Oh, that was you had money. Yeah. Okay, if you have a minivan parked out front, you have money. Dude, if my this kid Brandon broke his fucking head open on a stack of bricks that were next to their trampoline, and I was like, you rich piece of shit. Because he had a stack of bricks. <laughs> and yeah, because he had that. Because that meant they were building something yeah, yeah. and you had money. Yep. Yeah, I was just like, oh, must be tough, dude, splitting your head open on some fucking high end textiles, you piece of shit. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I do. So, I do. yeah, I think I had so much judgment sometimes mm -hmm. against that whole universe that it makes me feel just way uncomfortable. You know, I still live in the same apartment I've been in for the past seven, seven years. And so it, I, I'm just afraid sometimes to spend any money. Yeah. I get scared. I get scared to give Nick a raise. <laughs> uh, you know? No, I feel the exact same way. I honestly do. Greg drives a truck that has a half a million miles on it. He refuses to get a new truck. Although he just bought a brand new fucking $70,000 Roadrunner. But. Roadrunner? What is that? Oh, like a, a Mopar Roadrunner, like a 69 Roadrunner. 68. 68. Let's get a picture of that. Yeah. This sounds like. But. He, I mean, some the, of y'all gonna split in the divorce. Let's yeah, see this damn picture. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, the same thing. Like we're we're afraid to, and you know, I don't have a million dollars in the bank, but I'm making more than I ever have. Yeah. Oh Isn't that wow, nice? that is beautiful, and it's blue too, just like that. Oh no, that is nice, dude. Yep, that's it. That is something. I'll freaking let you hickey my butt in that thing. Mm-hmm. I thought you were talking about that thing at Brennan Shaw used to drive. That damn uh, look like a big mosquito. Kind of <laughs> oh, thing. yeah, that's nice. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. Yeah, we just splurged. Wow, and is it run yet? Do you guys have it running? Yeah, it's a race car. Dang. So he doesn't drive it. Yeah. It's been sitting in our driveway for eight months. So what is it about um, being down there and saying, oh, you, oh, wait, you don't drive it at all yet? No, not that. It, that's that's It's not street legal. Okay. Yeah. So what will make it street legal? He won't. He's going to take it to the, he's going to take it to the uh, strip and start racing it. Hell yeah. Yeah. And that'd be great for some Tammy videos. Dude, Think I would that. like to go sit in on one of those. Yeah. I want to yeah. be there. It'll be fun. I want to be just that, like, uh, I want to be medieval Knievel. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I want to yes. be on a dirt bike, but with a damn lance. Oh, uh, and with that mullet, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. son. Let the Lord freaking work, yes, baby. Yes, yes. Um, what is it you feel like about being down there in San Diego and in that area? I really like it because it's still California, but it's not L.A. I don't know if I could live in L.A. Yeah. It's so, hectic. You're not missing Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, just... The weather, I know that's stupid to say, but like, you know, Texas was miserable and you're hardly ever miserable in San Diego. The taco shops, it's just, I just love it. I don't think, it would take a lot to get us to move. I think if we were to move anywhere else, it would be Austin. Yeah. Austin area, um, which, you know, we're going back to the heat, but I love the Austin area. Um, but I am I think we're going to be here for the rest of our lives, hopefully, San Diego. Wow. I just love it. And do you guys have offspring? Are y'all fertile or anything like that? No, we're fertile. Okay. Uh, so that's a choice. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, no thanks. No thanks for now, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I keep saying, oh, in five years. We've been married, oh my gosh, 11 years. Yeah. And I'll say, oh, wow. let's wait three or four years and come back and see. And then every three or four years, we're like, no. No, and let's wait three, you know. So, and then now my career's kind of taken off. So I'm like, eh, I don't know. I won't be like, if we don't have kids, I don't think either either of us are going to be like, oh man, we miss, we should have had. No, I'll be good. Now, which would you freeze a batch of them eggs? You think? No. That freaking because I think that cold Easter, you know, start that thing up. <laughs> For me, I'm thinking if it happens, it was meant to be. If it doesn't, it's not. Mm. So I'm not going to go out of my way. You know, I don't yeah. know. That, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I've never had, so I've never had like a strong desire to have kids. Okay. And, I'll, and I've always said, I won't until that happens. You know, I used to work with this old lady and she asked me if I had kids and I said, no. And she said, well, let me tell you this. Don't have kids just because you feel like you should have, because it'll make it harder. Have kids if you want kids. Mm. And I was like, that's. That's so true. And so I've I've never felt the strong need. To get that batch. Yeah. But hell, hell, in five years, I might. I don't know. So I'm going to wait until that happens. And if it never happens, all good. I hate to interrupt the bonanza, but sometimes you got to get your brain reignited, recalibrated, really. And uh, something that will help you is a company called BetterHelp. You know, I've suffered from mental health issues, mental disorder, probably, you know, I wake up in the morning and I don't want to do it and I don't even care what it is. And when I need help, sometimes I don't, I don't, you know, there's not a place I can go. There's not a therapist I can drive to, or there's not, you know, somebody, there's not somebody in my area. You know, I might live in a rural area. Well, that is all changing. Thanks to better help. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. I mean, you can access them on your phone. You can access them over FaceTime. You can access them over text. There's a broad range of expertise in BetterHelp's counselor network, which which may not be locally available in many areas. It's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It is professional counseling done securely. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions so you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. It's it's time for a change in therapy. It's time that everyone should be able to get help, and this is how. Visit betterhelp.com slash T-H-E-O. 
That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P. And join the over half a million people taking charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. That's right. A special offer for this past week and listeners get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash T-H-E-O. If you need help, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed, and get it. Now back to the episode. It has been reported, and I'm sadly to share it with you, that Americans are overpaying on car insurance by over $21 billion. What? Honk, honk. Hold up. I got traffic in my brain suddenly. That's right. Americans are overpaying on car insurance by over $21 billion. But searching for a better deal for car insurance, it can take hours. And typically results in a barrage of unwanted spam calls. Oh, who's this? Ah, I don't know. I just, I was on the website and now this, ah. Until now, things have changed thanks to thezebra.com. Thezebra.com is the nation's leading car insurance comparison site. It's long overdue. And it's the only place you can compare quotes side by side from over 100 providers and choose the best for you in 90 seconds or less. Plus, they will never sell your information to spammers. So you won't get the unwanted calls and emails, the harassment. TechCrunch calls the Zebra Kayak for auto insurance. The best part is that it's completely free. You can save up to $670 a year using thezebra.com. With states reopening and people back on the road, The Zebra is committed to making sure you're covered at the lowest price possible. Don't go from one site to the next. It takes too long. Your time is too valuable. Save on car and home insurance as well if you need it. Go today and start saving at thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. You're going to get car insurance. Support the podcast. That's thezebra.com slash T-H-E-O. T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash Theo. Thank you. Do you do you get up? Like, do you have like a daily routine kind of? Or you kind of go by the wayside? Like just whatever, you know, kind of? I do have a daily routine. And I have to or I won't do shit. I won't do shit if I don't have like my week planned out, mm-hmm. my yeah day to day. So just I'm gonna film this day. I'm gonna post this day. I have you know phone calls this day. I have everything. And then my nieces live with us, so now I'm homeschooling them. No, how old are they? Three days a week, eight and ten. Oh my god, are they smart? Yeah, they are. They start. Uh, they start this week. So um, I'm doing that three days a week. No, yeah. and you're giving lessons and everything. Yeah. What kind of stuff are they learning about? Well, it's a lot of like just math and shit. I'm going to teach them. I'm kind of going to go out of the box. I'm going to teach them how to cook Mm -hmm. at a grocery shop, stuff like that. You know what I mean? Because so many damn adults don't know how to cook. Like their mom, my sister who lives with us, Mm -hmm. holy shit, can't even make spaghetti, dude. Really? Yeah. That's heartbreaking. Yeah. And I, you know, I cook. And so I'm like, y'all are going to learn how to cook. Yeah. Even if they were boys, I would teach them how to cook. Oh, it's such a skill, man. Yeah. I, dude, yeah, even if we all you make every night is macaroni and cheese, yeah. you're going to learn how to do it. You know, or split up an apple or something. Exactly. You know? Exactly. I remember we used to do, like, my mom would work, and so we would make whatever, you know, we had at the house. So we'd always come up with some real bad ideas and shit and make it, like, more... Uh, we used to do macaroni with marshmallows. I think we went through a little phase of that shit, and it was. And you ate that? Yeah, yeah, we ate it. Well, here's the thing: once you made it, you got to eat. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can't throw it away. No, so no, there no, wasn't no. a lot of wiggle room. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, did you make it a second time um, and a third? Well, here's what happened: somebody would make it. One of the kids would make it. We had four children. One of them would make it. Then the other three would try to up, outdo them, you know, with their bullshit idea. And my, one of my sisters at the time was five, so she would just fucking burn all kinds of shit, and then we would fight, you know? Yeah. Oh, you got to throw in a fight there. Oh, yeah. You can't not fight. But I really enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> When you see, so you have a lot of interaction with like a lot of different celebrities and stuff, it seems like, that have reached out to you. Um, Is all that been organic? I know you had the, uh, the, uh, 
<laughs> the fan attack video with um, Luke Bryan. With Luke Bryan. Yeah. That was really, really crazy. And his mother, which yeah. is just I one thought, of the best moments ever. Dude. So I have never, ever reached out to a celebrity. Mm-hmm. That's all been them coming to me. And Winona that. Judd follows me. I just no. want to throw that out there. Yep. Damn. So anyway, um, yeah. So a little backstory on this. So they contact me. Luke and his wife, they call me like, because I was supposed to go to this charity event. They call me like a week before. He's like, hey, I want to try to prank my mom. Like, I'm thinking about if you attack me. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's great. That's hilarious. Let's do it. He reached out. Yeah. Out of the blue. Yeah. So he well, messaged his, you? Is it his, somebody who works with him messaged you? His wife, had, had his, uh, his wife follows me on Instagram. Okay. So we follow each other. And they call, yeah, they invited me to their charity event. And then him and his wife FaceTimed me. Like a week before I was supposed to go out there. He's like, I have this idea. Damn, it's romantic. Yeah. God. Um, so I get there and I'm thinking it's just going to be just a simple, you know. He goes, so security's out front and I've been telling my mom, my mom all morning that there's a crazy fan out there and that she's threatening to kill us. And I go, hold on. So this is like, is she going to make sure she doesn't have a gun? Yeah. Like, cause I didn't know he was going to like tell her that I was threatening to kill. So like, so his mom was scared. Right. She's on alert before. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is her son. This is the dang meal ticket. Yeah. Man. yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Kill my other son. Yeah. Kill Randy Bryan. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all could damn fucking yeah. set, a, set a bear trap on the third hole for Randy, but we need Luke, you know? But I so feel you. So she was set up to to be scared of me okay so i'm like oh my god are you sure this he's like no it's gonna be great i was like make sure because you know she's from the south i don't know if she's you know make sure she's not packing he goes we've we've made sure so apparently she does i don't know yeah he goes we've made sure i said okay and that's something nice about an older person you could like it's it, you can feel easy if they got a gun on them. Yeah, because there's not as much body. There's not as much body on them. <laughs> yeah, and she was super skinny too, so you can you know. Yeah, quickly yeah. you can yeah, give yeah. her a big hug and double over like that. And next thing you know, you've yeah. done a full body search. <laughs> um, but we did the prank, and I thought she was gonna. I mean, I felt I instantly thought I shouldn't have done this. Yeah, I shouldn't have done this. At what point? Let's go through a little bit of it. Um, okay. And is it, is it hot in here? Isn't it a little bit? I'm feeling a little better. You are? Okay, yeah, yeah. good. I put it down to 70. You did? Yeah, and just have a little sweat right here. Ooh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You look very oh, nice, by thank the Thank you. Okay, so you sneak in. Uh, <laughs> Rolling on top. She throws her cigarette. Hey, I got her. 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 Hey, hey, it wasn't until I got up. Yeah, and then right there, I, 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 as soon as I stand up, I'm like, oh my god. Oh, and there's mom holding her back. Yeah. Come on, bitch. Come on. Right there, I go, I go, oh no. I thought she was going to pass out. And look at that. Wow, it all comes to a head right there. Mom saves the day. Oh, yeah. Shows that she's still got that mother wolf in her, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Afterwards, she was like, I was going to whoop your ass. And she was going to, too. She was oh, dressed. She was yeah. dressed to whoop ass. Would you see her throw the six? She, had, she, go, she yeah. threw it. And she was ready. She used to throw that shit like she was warming up. Oh, my you know? God. Like she was, was swollen Ryan, dude. Like she was about to pitch some fucking yeah. hitters right in your face. Man. That was fun. That was fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Um. So do you feel like that world kind of embraces you, the, the like kind of the country music world? Do you feel – because I feel like every – you're just so – I feel like you're for everybody. Do you yeah. feel like it's specific? No, I feel like I'm for everybody. Yeah. Um, I have a, a – from everywhere, from all, I mean, every ethnicity. I think people assume that only, you know, white Southern people um, follow me. And no, 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 that's not true. I feel like I'm for everybody because everybody loves redneck humor. Yeah. You don't have to be a redneck to enjoy that. You know, it's fucking funny. Well, a lot of it's just relatable yeah. stuff. Like Even if you're looking at your YouTube and it's going through the drive through and just, <laughs> you know, um, you know, the people snacking on different stuff and experiencing it and just uh, to be in that moment. Also, going through the drive-thru with somebody, a lot of times, yeah, you get, you're behind a couple cars. 
Dude, this shit gets you. It's some damn intimacy because you're just chilling there. That's <laughs> the biggest wait. commitment I've ever made. Sometimes is being three cars deep in a drive thru with with somebody I don't know very well. Sitting there waiting together. God, you know, those drive through videos are my most popular and most requested videos, which blows my mind. Yeah, because I'm just sitting there eating, dude. Yeah. Have you watched? The, have you seen the mukbangs on on YouTube? I've seen some so, of them. I like the donut one that you and Jim did when y'all oh, stacked yeah. those different types of meals. <laughs> so here's how that started. Like a couple years ago, mukbang, mm-hmm. it's called mukbang or something. I don't I don't say that word because it's stupid. It's a mukbang. Right. Okay. Um, they started getting like, people were getting millions and millions of views and making money. And I'm like, and I, I said, this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You sit there and watch someone eat. I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. And I go, let me do one as Tammy to basically make fun of it. Mm-hmm. And so I only planned on doing one. So I did one. It's my most viewed on YouTube. People would not let me not do another one. And mm-hmm. it's it's my mo- if I go a week or two without doing one, my DMs are like, when's the next month? I'm like, you just it's it's so funny. It's so easy. It's easy content. I just go through the drive through. Yeah, it's all improv. I talk about whatever. I make shit up and eat. Yeah. And that's it. It's beautiful, man. You gave Thank me that poster. You. I love that. Um, I also love, it's just like, I think it just feels, it obviously like it's produced your shit, you know, it's like you guys are doing it, but it just feels, I don't know, it just feels fun. I'm trying to think of what really makes me get into it, you know, I'm trying to think of what makes me. Because it's ridiculous. It's almost, it's almost like watching a car wreck. I think it's no, because for oh. me, sorry, like for me, it is. Because I just have been in that situation so many times and never, like, just been in a moment like that. And you're like, yeah, this is actually kind of close to what shit is like when you're just kind of with somebody. Yeah. You know, and you have to decide on food and you display your (laughs) best chance to display your manners on a damn date sometimes is at the, you know, when the drive through lady says, what can I get you? You know, and you get to see if the person's nice or not, if they say please or thank you. Yeah. Um. Yes. So I think some of that, just seeing it, just feels real human. Yeah, relatable. Yeah, it feels real, real relatable. People love them, so I keep doing them. Do you think about doing like uh, something that's more in the acting world? I know you've had some stuff go on, but do you think about that kind of, or are you kind of happy with the space that you're in? I, I'm happy with the space I'm in, um, but, and if I don't go beyond that, I'll be so happy and content. But yeah, yeah. I'm I'm trying to write a Tammy Tammy movie right now, mm. so we'll see if that ever gets made or happen. You know, sh- you know how shit goes, like you know. But I'm trying to write a Tammy movie. Um, got some stuff kind of going on in the work, so hopefully that'd be great. But if it doesn't, I'm good. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm just taking it a day at a time, and I'm t- you know opportunities. I'm like, let's let's try it. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I I, I would. I'm trying to think if I have a opportunity and something i'm doing i would i would certainly include you you know well, thank you yeah i think Hell it would just yeah. be fun that'd be great what kind of thing could we what kind of even thing what kind of characters could we be you think and i'm not playing tammy you can do whatever you if we, want if I make dude, a tammy as long movie, as you just be alive if you know? i if i make a tammy movie you got to make a cameo in the tammy movie oh i'm not doing uh oh a cameo yeah yeah i'm just not paying somebody i'm no. not doing a damn birthday <laughs> no. party for somebody for nine dollars <laughs> no no, 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 no. <laughs> you just gotta be. You just gotta be in the movie. Oh, yeah. I'll stop in that bitch, man. Yeah, you know. But I want a real role. I want to be a damn. Okay. You know, somebody that runs and works at a gift shop, or somebody yeah. that <laughs> you know, somebody that yes. fixes something. I want to be somebody that knocks on a door and shows up. Yeah, you, know? you want to play an important part, and you should. Yeah, that's I'll what do I it, want. dude. Yes, God, that's what I want. Yes. Well, it's a great time, and we're happy. And on the website, if you go to theovon.com, it's been refurbished and rehashed, reimagined and creativized. And who's helped us? Well, they're called Modify. Modify is a web design and development group that offers game changing service, providing subscription based professional web design for the cost of your old cable bill. Why would you want to do it yourself or pay top dollar for less value? Modify will design your site 
Its unbeatable plan is fast, affordable, and high quality. With 20 years in the website design game, Modify's last website ever plan is the best option out there. Heck, we just got it. I mean, we just got it. For just $249 a month, you will enjoy the relief of an easy process, quick turnaround, and an evergreen website, and the convenience of having a personal web design team assigned to your account to handle all your ongoing website needs. That's right. They build your site, they put it together, and they service it. It's $249 a month. Modify's plan includes unlimited updates, unlimited support, easy editing tools, and future redesigns. No cost to build, no contract, and they do it all for you. Only $249 a month. I'm using them. Check out our site, theovon.com. Get yours today with a $249 a month at modify.com slash Theo. That's M-O-D-I-P-H-Y dot C-O-M slash T-H-E-O. That's modify with a P-H. M-O-D-I-P-H-Y dot com slash T-H-E-O. These guys don't F around. Gang. What else is going on? Um... Mm. Not much, dude. I freaking left some stuff out on the counter at home. What'd you leave out? Mm, I left some blueberries and I left a damn London broil. The blueberries will be okay. What's a London broil? It's a meat. It's like a kind of a high end kind of meat, I guess, or medium end. And it's raw? Yeah. Oh, it's, that may be done for just because of the heat and the no air. Yeah. Oh, you're going to take a loss on that one. Yeah, it just hurts a little. Yeah. At least you got the blueberries. London broil. I've never heard of that. It's good, man. It's the best thing Britain it, ever did it, for us. <laughs> it looks like a skirt steak. Uh, Some? Yeah. No? Yeah. You know, it's a little more, f- I feel like it's a little more, bo- like, there's not a lot of taste to it. It looks kind of great, but there's not a lot of taste to it. Kind of like Britain. Oh. It's very Brit. It's as British as you could get. Wait, but it says grilled steak served cut diagonally, so it's just the cut. Oh, really? <laughs> So it's just a regular steak. It's just how it's cut, right? But they cut it out of a place that definitely That's, is English as fuck. I feel like it. Like when I'm eating it, as compared to like a brisket or something, it doesn't stand a <gasps> okay. chance to a no, damn no, no, brisket. No, no, no. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because if you're eating a brisket, you're not thinking about Paris, France. No. You're thinking about Texas. Okay. That okay makes sense. Yeah, if I'm now. having a brisket, I'm thinking about wherever I am at that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, what was that? What's in the news, Nick? We'll get into a couple of news topics. What do we got? Ex Navy oh. SEAL uh, credited with killing Osama bin Laden. He was uh, people got angry with him on Twitter because he was bragging about not wearing a mask. He took a selfie with a uh, a Marine behind him or a guy in a Marine cap who had a mask on, and he goes, "I'm not a pussy like this guy." And people got oh. upset. <laughs> that's a risky move. <laughs> risky, and then risky to tweet about it. Yeah, that's brave to tweet about it. I almost wonder if he was tweeting out of. Like trying to get back at the guy. Uh, oh. I think it's the rivalry between SEALs and Marines. Oh, I could see a little bit of that. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, this goes really into Ooh. recently. I, ha- I I saw a dang man in the um in a Marine's hat, and I thought it said Mariners on it, Seattle Mariners. <laughs> and so I'm asking him about Ichiro and you know all of these different guys and Ken Griffey Jr. and all this shit. And the guy is looking at me like, I am a damn. And it said Marines and not Mariners. He looks at me like I'm a damn still in school adult, you know? <laughs> oh and, uh, and so it was it was the most awkward thing ever. <laughs> um, oh. But dude, I think if you kill Bin Laden, dude, I don't think you got to wear, I don't think you have to wear a mask. I don't think that dude needs to wear a damn shirt if he doesn't want to. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I don't care if he wears damn two dicks to a urinal. This dude killed Osama bin Laden. Oh, that's him? That's, that's him. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. Wow. And also, a, this guy seems semi ginger. You know how hard it is for a ginger to sneak through the damn, through, you know, where it get. I mean, it gets pretty, you know, it's more of a tan environment over there in the desert. Oh, yeah. Everybody's got a tan. Oh, yeah. So you're just going to lollygag through with a damn, you know, with that damn torch skin? <laughs> that <gonna> freaking... <laughs> torch skin. I mean, I just don't know if this guy needs. I mean, he should wear a shirt that said, hey, I'm not wearing a mask because I killed Osama bin Laden. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh. I think, but for me, I feel like he gets out of jail free. Yeah. Eh, I don't, I mean, I wear a mask just to, I guess, respect other people, but if- Oh, totally. If someone comes, if if I'm in the grocery store and someone's not, I'm not, I don't say anything or freak out. No. No, I'm not a, yeah, I'm not some kind of mask warrior. No, no, no. Yeah. We're not the mask police. Uh Uh-uh. No, I'm not the mask police. I'm not even a mask. I don't want to be. I'm not even a damn mask parole officer, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, I have certain feelings about the whole uh, pandemic and everything, but I wear a mask. It's like somebody, it's like shaking somebody's hand when you meet them. And if you feel comfortable after that, if people choose not to, then that's between them. Yeah. I feel like it's between consenting adults almost, kind of. Agree. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think if, for me, this guy killed Bin Laden. I think this dude doesn't have to wear damn shoes into a freaking 7-Eleven if he doesn't want to. You know what I'm saying? I think he can go yeah. high on the hog as he wants. Agree. Nick, what do you think? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I I agree. I, he should be able to do whatever he wants, not wear the mask. Yeah. I'm really worried about this, though. Uber and Lyft might shut down in uh, California on Friday because uh, they're trying to make all the drivers be employees instead of independent contractors. So they're just going to withdraw. They're threatening just withdraw from California and just shut down. And there won't be Uber and Lyft in California of wow. on Friday. Well, I wonder why just in California. Uh, because it's California state that is trying oh. to protect the employees or independent contractors and make employees. But if they shut down, then it's hurting everybody. Wow. Oh, and man. that's the only place I... Nick frequents yeah. right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, He had a car and then he, uh, well, it's your story, Nick. I don't want to throw you under your own car. Uh, a, tree, a tree fell on it uh, during a windstorm. It was like uh <laughs> first nice car I ever bought and oh. a, a tree fell on it and it totaled it. And then the, the only hit. windstorm and the only tree in Los <laughs> Angeles too. <laughs> I was going to ask, was that here in L.A.? Like, Uh, what? It was the night of the Super Bowl. They actually said 2,000 trees were cleared from Los Angeles that night. There was... Oh, yeah. I slept right through it. Wow. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) What's what's taking so long with insurance? Uh, Nothing. I I got paid. I got paid out for it. Yeah, I got paid out for it. And then the pandemic happened. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then, I don't know. Ubering's actually... I like it. Yeah, and it's so convenient. Mm -hmm. Like, it... That sucks. I like it, but I just, sometimes I get damn judgmental when I'm in there and I just, I will, in my head, I'll have like a stack of dimes that I'm giving as a tip, you know, hypothetical dimes. <laughs> and each time they do something a little that doesn't really meet my fancy, I guess. Like what? I will, okay, smack in their gum. Okay. Yeah. Okay. A lady gave me a ride from here to home and smacked her gum so much that I had to go see my therapist that week, and that is 100% true. And that still, I can still hear her smacking. Mm. And it was just irrational how much she did it. Yeah. And um, another thing, uh, talking to me about a lot of different stuff. (laughs) No, you're right. You're right. I don't want to talk at all. Yeah. I'd like, and and if they talk, but I'll make it, yeah, yeah. No, you're right on that one. And it's hard to curtail that conversation, you know? Yeah. 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 Do you ever do you ever have people ask you that don't know who you are? Oh, what do you do? Yes. Do you hate it or do you like it? Because I hate it. I I hate it now. Yeah, okay. I think there was a time when I liked it. What do you tell them? I say I work in I work in entertainment. You know, I do. Uh, we do outreach. I've said I'll do animal outreach. I have some basic kind of lies I'll tell. You know, <laughs> I work for the city. You know, I've yeah. been. You know. Or I'll do unemployment. I'll do, you know, I'll say that a lot of times. Or I'll, uh, if it's somebody that I feel like is, if it's somebody that's not going to talk much, that's yeah. how I'll gauge what answer I give. Same. Them. If I can feel that they're going to, because when you say comedian or you say YouTuber or whatever you say, if I if if I know that they're going to be like, oh, let me pull it, you know what I mean? I'll make something up yeah um but if it's someone that i usually say like social media marketing which i don't even know what that is yeah but i tell people that i like and they're that. always like oh like what i'm like just like facebook and instagram God, yeah, i, I like just make that. something up yeah. <laughs> but i hate it when people ask me what i do and i don't know why i think it's because they do like once you tell them they like want to look you up you know yeah. what i mean they make a big you know so I yeah, was one guy's like, playing me a thing of mine one time while he's driving. I'm like, this is insane, you know. <laughs> so that really, you know, that's unfortunate. Do you have this instance where if you are with somebody, um, 
and they don't it's kind of uncomfortable sometimes if people are giving you attention and they're not giving it to somebody else that you're with which they wouldn't probably because they don't know that person or they're not a fan of them i always feel so uncomfortable because i'm like man i don't want my friend to not Mm -hmm. feel good or not feel like or feel like i'm more important than them you know like and when that, you get recognized yeah from, that yeah, makes yeah. me feel yeah if i'm with like my you know family like my sisters or like my close close friends that are like used to it i'm mm-hmm. fine but if i'm with someone that's like you know never like for instance i was in nashville before the pandemic and i was visiting some um college friends mm-hmm. we went out and i had people recognize me and it, it it's awkward when they're just kind of standing there like you know and you, you get what I'm saying? Like it's it's it can be very awkward. You're right. Like when they're not giving anybody else attention and they're kind of making a big deal about you. But yeah, yeah. it makes you feel some type of way a little yeah. bit. You start to develop this sixth sense, though. I know when I walk in a room, I can tell like who knows, who doesn't, how this is all going to play out. Like you start to get, and it's not an ego thing. It's just it's like you've done you've been through this little drill so many times. You start to just you develop a sixth sense. You develop. Yeah. You develop, okay, this person, no, I can feel them. They're telling this person, mm-hmm. this guy's not going to say anything, but he, I feel like he knows. Um, mm-hmm. I wish this bitch knew, you know. Yeah. Sometimes I get that, <laughs> yeah. too. Because I always get some real mukbangs that know, yeah. dude, you know. So yeah. a lot of real. Same. You know, a lot of closeted men are always hollering at me. Really? God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's crazy like guys want to go on a damn walk or something go on a walk just that's go on crazy a walk. just you need to get some fresh air <laughs> yeah, but unless one of us is a murderer you know <laughs> what else we got in the news nick Let's see what else do you really keep up with the news like n- you know news? not a ton i stay off these days it's yeah. too i don't trust it that much anymore <sighs> yeah it wants me to not have fun yeah exactly i'm kind of the same way <clears throat> one thing that gets me though i feel like we need a damn centralized mask mm. like i mean people are wearing yeah you know somebody cut out part of a hat and taped it over their face you know you got another guy some guy shows up and you think he's a surgeon and he fucking works at <laughs> best buy you know what i'm saying there's so many you have a guy in a damn uh scream three mask like Dude. there's like how there's no protocol for yeah. unleash a mask <laughs> that everyone needs yeah did you see that viral meme going around just a few days ago there's a guy with a long beard he had it tucked up up and under his sunglasses and he was using his beard as a mask oh, that's awesome. now that's pretty cool i would do that that was pretty cool <laughs> dude yeah there's one guy had his hand amputated and he saved it and he got it put in front of his <laughs> and it hung it on two damn little door hooks no. yeah. oh, it's just beautiful God. to see a lot of stuff that's going on um i saw it on instagram but it's like no. put a centralized mask out. You got people just had goddamn half a panty in front of their head. Yeah. You know oh what I'm saying? Oh my god! And are they serious? I don't know. They can't be. You can't be. Oh my god! And that, gosh. but but it qualifies. That's the thing. It's funny. It's like yeah. oh, as long as you walk in, you know. As long as you have something. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> yeah. And it could be fucking anything. You're good. Come on in. Yeah. That's what's so crazy to me, dog. I'm not a doctor. Fuck, I'm not even an exterminator. But I'll tell you this. Dude. Just anything in front of your mouth, that that's not a no. real, that's not a plan. It doesn't even have to be cloth. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> as long as it's connected behind your ears, fucking anything, yeah. dude. Oh, dude, that one guy had a strong enough overbite, and they're like, that qualifies. <laughs> You know? Oh my God! Qualifies. It could be anything. You'll have a fellow just just uh, comb his bang straight out across his face. Oh, bang face! Yeah, he's healthy. Get him in here. <laughs> and then you got some sixty year old man in a damn raggedy Andy mask oh, over there. Oh my God! Fucking gosh. drinking Purell out there. It's just it's like how is, is it, there's no protocol. No, no. I've never thought about that until you brought it up. That you're right. Like gosh nick bring up the anti-maskers league um if you can oh uh, i didn't know about this well this is something let's take us here nick what is this do you want the anti-mask league Uh, we'll we'll go right here uh marijuana vending machines are now available in colorado with uh Mm. colorado with more to follow okay Uh, yeah Yeah. so 
And do you guys uh, do marijuana in that? Drugs? Um, I feel like I, I I was like 28 the first time I ever smoked weed. Oh, yeah. Um, I used to on occasion, and it started giving me panic attacks. Where were you at when you smoked it first? Were you with your man or what? Oh, my gosh. I think, yeah, we were, we were living in San Diego. I moved to San Diego when I was 26, so yeah, yeah. Um, at the house. And, and who would introduce you to it? Was it you? Was it him? Was it? I've always been around people that smoke. Okay. So I think we had a roommate. I can't even, I don't, I don't even know, man. Um, but smoked it, loved it, laughed my ass off. It was one oh, of those yeah. great laughing, you know. So I'd do it like once or twice a month. Great. Had a great time for maybe two, three years. And then boom, panic attacks. No matter what. I, so I smoke CBD now because I still like the smell. Mm-hmm. So I'm just a cbd -er. Okay. Yeah. And does it feel like it calms you a little? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It works. And I don't feel like um, somebody's going to murder me. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Honest to God, I remember the worst the worst time I ever got paranoid during it. Um, smoked weed. Mm -hmm. I went to bed. And I was positive that Greg was going to kill me. Like, oh, I hate that no, shit. No, like I thought he's going to murder me tonight. It was oh. so real, and he came in the he came in the bedroom. Oh, which is the first sign of somebody's going to murder you. They come into the room <laughs> in a dark room. <laughs> he comes in. I'm like, oh my god, how's he going to do it? Does he have a gun? Is he going to strangle me? Yeah, what's How he going to do? And he walks over to my side of the bed. I'm like, oh, and no. I'm literally my heart. I'm literally like, oh god, oh god, god, I'm gonna I'm gonna die. I mean, and this was real, dude. Yeah, in your head, yeah, it's real. And he leans over and goes, good night, baby, and gives me a kiss. And I go, he's fucking faking it. Yep. He's going to wait till I fall asleep, mm -hmm. and he's going to do it. And I did not sleep that night into the morning. And I woke up. I was like, I need to not smoke weed anymore. Yeah. And I, yeah, I don't smoke anymore. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah but also some of his behaviors. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Some of that shit is a dead giveaway. Dude, when you're high, you're like, oh, this motherfucker's going to kill me. <laughs> and then next thing you know, they go and uh, take a sip of water. And you're like, oh, yep. yeah. Yep. Just hydrating up this damn murderer. <laughs> you know? I feel you, bro. We don't yeah. do that. Um, oh. What about, do you ever, I feel like, I remember one time getting so high and going to a damn funeral. And I thought, oh, I just, no. oh, and I was laughing. It gave me the damn oh, giggles, dude. No. And it was just like, can you believe everybody's tripping out, dude? Holy shit. Just because Mr. Polito is dead, dude. Nobody even liked this guy. People oh are just there. I'm like, half these people are pretending. I'm fucking laughing. And then I'm starting to think, yeah, I started getting paranoid and thinking that people, somebody was a murderer. Because it looks like a damn crime scene when you're at a funeral. Yeah, a, it's like a, a movie scene. Like yes. somebody, yeah, yeah. It's like a whodunit. Yeah, I can see that. When you're high at a funeral, it is a straight up who. <laughs> Done Did you it, think it would you know? be a good experience? Uh, there was just weed going through the area. Okay, and you okay. happen to and I happen to have a funeral on the docket. Okay. But it was uh, yeah. I would never do it again, man. Oh. That's the crazy thing about weed, dude. It's just it, it can be either fucking amazing mm -hmm. and the best, or can bring so much fucking fear. Like, oh my gosh, it's one or the other, and I don't it, get it. Yeah, it's like back page for your DNA. It's like meeting somebody <laughs> off the internet. That's what weed is, man. Yeah, you never know what you're going to get. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah, you might get murdered. You might get not murdered. Yeah. You know? It's one or the other. Yeah. <laughs> um, This was something that happened. This is in, uh, take us through a little bit of this, Nick. The Anti-Mask League of San Francisco was an organization formed to protest the requirement for people in San Francisco to wear masks during the 1918 pandemic. Yeah, so they had a yeah they had a group of people, and actually, there's a New York Times article if you if you try and look that up real quick. Um, so basically, they had something very much like what we have now, where people didn't want a lot of people didn't want to wear masks. A lot of people did want to wear masks. There was people getting ill, um, and there's people on the street. The police would even give you fines, like oh. if you didn't have a mask on, you could get a fine for like five dollars up to twenty five dollars. That was a lot back then. Oh yeah, it was a it was a just damn damn half of a buttload, dude. If you're doing a damn gender reveal and you're, it's your friend Paige, it was <laughs> half a damn BL. The first infection, go down a little bit. There they are. Was identified in March at a army base in Kansas. By the fall of 1918, seven cities had put in effect mandatory face mask laws, mm. and um. The masked city, San Francisco, became known as the masked city because of this pandemic. Damn. And people didn't know. 
how to wear them. Oh, and somebody, yeah, somebody shot somebody eventually. Because they weren't wearing a mask? Yep. On October 28, a blacksmith named James Wisser stood on Powell and Market Streets using a crowd to, urging a crowd to dispose of their masks. Um, and somebody hit him with a sack of silver. Damn, that'll get you. <laughs> yeah. Shitty way to go. You always want to make money and then bam, son. <laughs> That shit gets you right in the oh, chin. Oh, no. Um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, this somebody died. Nobody's killed anybody yet for not wearing a mask or wearing one, I don't think. Uh, I don't think so. So we're still in yeah. a pretty good space there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, compared to how it had been. I mean, people yeah. really were losing it. Wow. Um, do we have any other questions that came in, Nick? Uh, that was pretty much it for the questions. Okay. All right. <laughs> well damn cool um, uh, dang um what are y'all gonna do what do you feel about this coming up like the holidays and halloween have you started thinking about that at all well every year we have a big halloween party you do oh yeah and um and there's nobody there that i know it's all like because i don't really know anybody in san diego i really don't like all my friends are up here in la and stuff um, so it's like my friend, it's like my sister's like employee, like work employee, like work, uh, what do you call them? Co-workers? Co-workers, And does yeah. she work at a bank or something? <laughs> no, no, she works, they work at a, a plumbing, like a plumbing office. Oh or yeah. Whatever, so it's just a bunch of plumbers. Um, but anyway, there's always like a ton of people, like it's one of those things where people invite people mm -hmm. to where I don't know who, who's there. But anyway, it's always a big, fun time. We look forward to it every year. We'd start decorating like a month before and we're probably not going to have it this year. Oh. Yeah, but we'll still have fun. You know what I mean? Um, but it seems like such a time when masks, you need masks. It's almost, you know, everybody has a mask on. It's the true. one party you can have. That's tr I didn't think about that. You're right. Kind of. I mean, I'm not calling you out for not having it. Yeah. I just want you to damn have it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, even though I stay home all the time, I fucking love knowing. Yeah, that somebody's having a Halloween party. That people are having a good time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I think we were going to try to still have something, but not just, just invite like us and the immediate friends, not, not all the people. Mm -hmm. But we'll still have something. But yeah, that kind of sucks. But And you also get the judgment from social media. If you, you know, if I were to have that big Halloween party, oh gosh, yeah, you know, you got the people on your ass. But uh, I think we're just gonna have something small, and then we're going home for Thanksgiving, which is the first time in like eight years we've gone home. Really? For Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Back to Thackerville or no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Durant, which is close, close to Thackerville. Wow. Um, but yeah, so we're doing that. Um, my sister's thirtieth is after Thanksgiving, so we're renting a cabin in Oklahoma. And, oh, fun! I love yeah, Oklahoma. Yeah. Well, certain parts. We went to Tulsa and we went to the ball okay. ballroom yeah. or something. You ever yeah. been there in yep. Tulsa? Mm -hmm. Man, it was so... I like it up there. It was a great show. Yeah, I like it up there. When you do your live show, what is it? Like, what do you do actually? Um, So what I did before the pandemic was I would come out as me mm -hmm. and do like mm, like 10 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. And um, I would thank everybody for coming and they think that was it and it, it got so awkward like people were pissed they'd be like i'd be walking through the crowd and they're like like i paid you know to, like, like pissed and then i would come back out as tammy yeah and that's when it really really took off oh yeah i'm thinking though for the future shows like mm -hmm. i'm just gonna do tammy and i almost only did the chelsea stuff just to see if i could do it as me and i can mm -hmm. but it's more comfortable doing it as tammy is it oh yeah Oh, yeah, it's more comfortable. I feel like the material's funnier. Mm -hmm. Although everything I I say is true and mm -hmm. happened to me, but I tell it as Tammy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And what about that little sh little Jim, that little sugar calamari? Why don't you bring him out? <laughs> oh, God. He lives. God, well, I would love to see him at something. <laughs> well, he's uh, busy. He works at, the, he's the assistant manager of the Dollar General. No, he isn't. Mm -hmm. In what city? Oh, gosh. Where's he? I know he lives in Georgia. Some little town outside of Macon. God, I can't remember it, but uh, yeah, I love Dollar General. Oh yeah, he's 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 running the place. Well, a lot of people don't realize Dollar General. If you live in a small area, rural area, Dollar General is it. It will be like the Walmart of yeah. The for three towns or four towns, you go to wherever the the Dollar General will be the clo the place that everybody goes, kind of for everything. Oh yeah, oh, people don't sure. realize that. Mm -mm. God, that and fucking pisses me off, dude. <laughs> It really and Dollar does. General is like popping in in small towns. Yeah. They know what they're doing. Yeah. 
They're making money. And they're good, yeah. Look at Dollar General stock. Pull it up, Nick. Oh. And I know it probably hadn't done well in this during this pandemic, but prior to that. I feel like that that's this is a hot time for them. Really? Yeah. Well, no, I guess if they're shut down. No. Well, if they're still open. Let me see them over I the past two up. years. Let me look at, the, yeah. Give me they're, a two-year, five-year, Nick. They're open. There's, there's one year. See? They I hit. mean, that's a money maker. Yeah. They're making money. Dear God, Look at dude. that. Yeah. Nothing but rising. Where else can you judge your fucking neighbors? And get a damn broom. Yeah. And some and some Dollar General uh, Hot Pockets. Yeah. Not the Hot Pocket brand. No. Dollar General oh, brand. Yeah, dude. And it feels like military-esque since it has general in it. You know, I think a lot of men <laughs> don't mind going. Yeah. <laughs> it's got that kind of vibe, you yeah. know. I just had a vision that one day Dolly Parton comes on and you come on and guest host that episode. <sighs> Because I'm going to be getting a studio in Nashville starting on September 1st. Really? Yeah. <gasps> if you do that, can you let me know? I'm letting you know. <laughs> oh, if she's going to do it, yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's going to be a goal I'm going to set. Or if you're doing it and I can come and walk. It, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And I see her doing this. I really do. Let's put it out to the universe now. Make this happen. Are you moving to Nashville? I'm, g- I'm getting a place there. Okay. So I'm going to be Nashville. there a lot, but... I'm um, also, we're not, we're keeping this and we're okay. keeping, you know, everything, keeping my place here and stuff. So I'm just kind of ch- testing it out. Yeah. But yeah, maybe that'd be fun. Maybe you, you'll come, maybe we do some, a couple of episodes. Morgan Wallen's going to come on one, oh, which yeah. I'm so excited about. That's um, awesome, Even though I didn't man. ask him yet. So <laughs> <laughs> He'll do it. He'll uh, do it. But I think he will do it. Yeah. Um, that is awesome. Yeah, I'm just kind of excited just to be able to like, I think just have different types of people. Yeah. But I would, but it's so funny because I was listening to Dolly Parton sings that I Will Always Love You. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know she did that. Oh, yeah. People she, think it's Whitney Houston. She did was great, but. No, she, you know what? She wrote that. She wrote that after she, she quit that show that she was on. No way. Really? Oh, it's a whole for Porter Wagner. She wrote it for Porter Wagner, who is her boss. She was on that show with him. And she quit, and he got pissed because um, she she made the show. You so ain't she, Porter. She's what's that song? Somebody's. I don't well, know. You ain't woman enough to take my man. No, it's like well, oh. you ain't so and so, and you ain't Porter. I think it was her and somebody. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a newer song. Oh, it is. I think so. You ain't Johnny or something like that. Yeah, yeah. You ain't Porter. Yeah, that's a newer song. I don't know who sings that. Um. Um. Oh yeah, there. Oh, it is. you ain't Dolly, and yeah. you ain't Porter. Ashley Monroe. Yeah. yeah, I was listening to her the other day, man. She I like is her. Good. Me too. Her voice, her voice is different than yeah. anything else I've ever heard. She's got like a, yeah, almost like a Dolly voice. I could see that. Like Dolly's voice is like, you know, oh, Dolly singing. God, it's like Father Time just damn <laughs> busting in your ear. You, you know, know, she's singing. It feels good. I just love her. But I will always love you. Put this on a little bit, Nick. We'll listen to a few seconds and then we'll oh, get out of yeah. here. Thank you. Is there a more beautiful woman? She did it. It's still beautiful. Yeah. My God. If I should stay Bring it up a little for me, Nick. Yeah. I would be in your way. Your husband's not going to get jealous we're listening to this, is he? No, he, uh, you could give me a reach around and he wouldn't get jealous. Okay, damn. Yeah. But I Of the way. Oh, oh, here we go. This is a bucket list I never knew I had. This, this. Yeah. Yes. We're doing it. There you go. What a moment. Yeah, you know what? I'm pretty confident. Wish I looked like 1970 Dolly. Oh, I think you got a lot of Dolly. Thank you. you. Yeah, I think you just remind everybody, you know that, you know that just, you just, I don't know, you're just so confident. I wish I was as confident as you sometimes. You Thank know? you. You're just a damn. You should be. I know. I don't know what happened. No, you, you, you are. It's in there. You should be. You got that mullet. You got. Majestic as fuck. You good. Oh, I got a penis shaped like a damn candy corn, though. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hey, that's different. 
Yeah. You know, you're you're different. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're it's right. amazing. Yeah, it just feels weird or something yeah. like that. You know, yeah. nobody wants to. You know, you don't. You know, somebody orders a jug of milk and you break out milk, but it's in a damn. You know, it's in a cornucopia shape. Yeah. People don't want to drink it. You know. Well, you just gotta find people that. You just gotta find a chick that's gonna not be scared of that. Yeah. Yeah. Really. And they're out there. Yeah. I've been dating too many shallow weens, you yeah. know, that don't like that candy corn. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> Find you a candy corn lover. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, man. Come to our Halloween party. I will. We'll have a big old. <laughs> It'll be on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. As long as your husband brings that damn haircut. And I've been looking at him in the distance, guys. I don't, maybe you guys, I don't even know if we said that he was in here. But, and right he has here. an announcement to make actually as well right now. Oh, I do. I'm so, oh, God. You give no, him I'm a joking. Mic. He doesn't. <laughs> it's like, don't give him a mic. Holy we're, crap. We're having dinner with Theo tonight. Oh. He's actually are we be, really or no? Yes, we are. He's going to actually be laying on the table. We're going to eat sushi off of him. <laughs> we're going to actually get to have dinner and dessert. That's great. I Some like candy that. corn for dessert. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm laying on my stomach for the first course and on my back for the second, baby. You yes, sir. <laughs> But oh you guys have a new gosh. studio that you guys are going to put together, right? You want to talk about that or no? Yeah, we're working on it. Uh, it should be finished uh, first week of September. It's in our so home. It's our, ha- our, our house, house was built in the 70s, and the, the room is underneath the staircase, but it's a big room. And it was not finished when we moved in. Like It was like a safe room. Oh my you know, God. back in the day, people had like safe rooms. Mm-hmm. So the walls weren't finished. When we bought the house, we found an old phone in there from the 70s. We found old porn magazines oh, in the only. walls. Yeah. So um, I haven't seen the room yet. It's for my podcast that I'll be starting. Greg hasn't let me see in the room, but he's been working on it for months. So oh. it's going to be real nice. Yeah. That's cool, huh? Yeah. I yeah. Can't. You can tell he's excited about it, too. It's cool. Right when he came in, I could just see he was so excited. Yeah. And it just, it, it hit me. It just made me feel excited. Yeah. You know? He's sweet. Bless his heart. He seems he's decent. He's very sweet. He seems just damn decent, which yeah. is the, it's as good as you can get these days for a man. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to have you out there for our podcast. Dude, I would yeah. love to come down. That That'd would be, be cool. really cool. We'll That'd treat you to cool. some dinner, too. Yeah. Okay. Make you a brisket. Okay, dude, I'll do it all. Yeah. We'll do it all. I would love to come down. Um, And and I'm going to put it out in the world. I want to get Dolly, and and we'll have you come to Nashville, and we'll do a, just a dang episode. Let's do it. It's got to happen, right? It has to. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It will happen. It could happen. It was used to be a little boosie was the goal, and now it's Dolly Parton. <laughs> I wonder if she'll need a pound of weed. I don't know. That's true. Dolly? Oh, <laughs> Boosie God. did. Oh. Yeah, we had a, we had a, we had a surplus boosie. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, and you don't, we, the podcast starts when, you said? You don't know yet? I don't know yet. We're, you know, we're, no rush on it. Hopefully in the next couple months. I love it. Yeah. If you haven't seen Chelsea, which I don't know you how you haven't, because she's all over everything now um you got to check her out uh and we'll share all of her socials and everything and just thanks so much over the years you've just been so encouraging even at mm-hmm. times you've just said something nice or just mentioned me on instagram or anything um uh, i just appreciate it thank you, know, you. well you know i'm a huge fucking fan of yours so thank you for having me well same back at oh you. my god thanks for thank coming thank you yep. now i'm just floating on the breeze and i feel i'm falling like these leaves i must be Cornerstone. Oh, but when I reach that ground, I'll share this peace of mind I found. I can feel it in my bones, but it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wind shine that light on. Damn, they're gone, I guess now.